Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video that's a little different than what I've done before, but um, I, I figured it might actually be interesting to some folks. Um, and I, I, what I wanted to do is take a look at this knife right here. This is the Skiff Made Blades uh, Drifter, and um, this is a knife that just arrived on my table this afternoon, as a matter of fact. Just came from the maker, um, and more importantly, I, I, well, maybe not importantly at all, I just finished the disassembly of it, so I, I've seen the inside of it, but this is a knife that I've actually been impressed with, but I've been more impressed as I look closely. And so I'm kind of wondering to myself, okay, let's look closely. Let's see the details. Because this feels like a knife that might stand up to that scrutiny. So what I figured I would do is, you know, as I'm sitting here, you know, I was sitting at my desk looking at the thing. And it was like, maybe I should walk people through this. You know, if I'm looking at a brand new maker, if somebody hands me something, um, and they, you know, as this often happens, you know, for instance, it shows, you remember those? Um, but somebody might hand me a high end piece and I, you know, I just kind of take a look around it to, uh, to, to, to try and appreciate it. And I figured I would take you along through that process here as I look at this knife. So, uh, just stream of consciousness here. I'm gonna zoom on in so you can see some of the details here, and I'm, I'm gonna try and use the camera itself to, to, to show you those details. I'm gonna be cleaning clothing it pretty regularly here, but one of the things that immediately jumps out at me is the blade right here. The blade on this guy has a very, very nice, what appears to be a hand satin finish. I don't know of a way to create this finish on a blade without doing it by hand, without using a piece of sandpaper back and forth like that. Um, there may be one, but I don't know about it. In fact, we see there is a different angle of the satin finish on the swedge up here, which, by the way, is a very nice swedge. But this satin finish is quite nice. But then we see that above it is actually a very reflective blade flat. Um, uh, you know, you can see right here, this is the, the, the connection of the, the, the USB cable going into my phone. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm sorry, that is. But still, nonetheless, you see very clearly a, a nice reflection in that. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, hey, everybody. Um, nonetheless, we see some really cool finishing on the blade here. In terms of the blade, another thing that I'm looking at that I'm just noticing for the first time is the spine of the blade. The spine of this blade is actually high polished. Um, it's hard to see, but it, this is a very, very nice polish job on this guy. I um, mean, in fact, it looks to me like the back end of the, like this little reverse tanto piece, and especially, again, if I clean it off a little bit, yeah, that's polished too. You can actually see me right here. Let's see if I can, yeah, I'll wave to you in that surface. Okay, I am duly impressed by that. Another detail that I might look at is the sharpening jaw. Um, generally speaking, I don't do this on knives that are, you know, uh, coming on my channel anywhere or other from the factory then, but this guy came to me directly from the skiffs. I've been on their list for... Uh, a while now. And, you know, my name finally got called, so to speak. And, um, and by the way, I don't resent them for that at all. I, in fact, I very much appreciate that they're not cutting me in line because I've got a YouTube channel, right? But if we look at the actual sharpening of this knife, the sharpening job is, is quite good. We see a very strong symmetry all throughout the knife which is uh, quite good. We see at the corners of the blade here, we see a little bit of rounding. And in fact, it almost feels to me, and this could be a result of the polishing or it could be an actual crowning, uh, but it almost feels like the, the top of this part here, which again is high polished, has been crowned off a little bit. If I run my finger along here, not only is it beautifully polished and smooth, but it, uh, it feels a little bit rounded on the corners. That is a... Uh, well, that's a nice detail. We can look here at the uh, finger choil here. We see very nice rounding around the corner. The uh, sharpening choil actually isn't quite long enough in my estimation. They could use to go just a little bit further because the, the plunge goes a little deeper. But honestly, I'm not I'm not freaking out about that. Um, it, it is very, very close to, uh, to, to, to perfect there. Um, and so we see that. On the back of the knife here, we have the, uh, the, 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 the maker's name here. Uh, Skiff, or the name of a boat. I'm not actually, I, I assume Skiff is the name. Yeah, Steve Skiff, that's right. I know this fact. This is a fact. This is the maker's name, maker's mark. In fact, this is the only labeling on the entire thing. Although, if you know anything about the custom knife or in production or whatever the heck these things are, game, you take one look at this and go, yeah, Skiff. Um, but anyways, nonetheless, you got the name there. And again, high polished and with a nice deep etch here. If we look at this guy a little closer, we can see, and in fact, you can kind of feel this guy as you run your fingers along there. Um, is that an etch? It, I think it is. Or maybe it's lasered on. Either way, it, it feels it feels something, right? It's not just like carved in there. They, they, this is blackened out a little bit. Um, it just that, that that looks very very nice. Holy shit! He pop. 
pardon my French, holy crap, he polished the underside of the blade by the lock bar, uh, the, the, the lock face here. This is the face where the frame lock touches. This underneath part, he took the time to high polish. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this video. I am duly impressed here. If we look at the pivot collar here, um, this is an anodized, uh, I think, 27 volt. Uh, is I've kind of determined this is my favorite titanium anodization collar. Like, uh, the, the path to my heart is about 27 volts worth of titanium anodization, right? I um, mean, I've used that color over and over again on custom pieces, and I, I, I just, I like it a lot. But they've done a nice job here with this Captain America-style pivot shield. This pivot shield actually serves two purposes. When you watch the disassembly, you'll see that the, 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 the stop pin is actually held in place by it. Um, but also, on the back side here, having this symmetrically large pivot shield here is serving as an over-travel stop on the lock bar, which no arguments there, right? That's that's good, right? Yeah, that's an over-travel. Um, but anyways, th 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 that's nice too, but look, it's really well done. We see, again, a very, very nice high polish on this guy, complete with then on the in inside here, we see a, a, a nice machine finish in there. It doesn't look like it's quite polished, but it's it's sure a nice finish. The hardware on this guy, I think, is aftermarket. I want to say Tie Connector is maybe the company that makes those, but I mean, they're nice, they work, but they're not unique. They're not Skiff original. Whatever, not a big deal. Next thing that I'm noticing is this texturing. This knife is very, very textured. It's textured in a way that I think is really nice and is sort of, it's relatively distinctive for Skiff. If you take a look at a lot of the work that they do, uh, they all have this kind of a wavy pattern. But one thing I'm noticing is just the niceness and the quality of that texturing. The quality of the machining on that is is quite high. Um, we see here that, it, you know, it just, it has not much in the way of chatter, not much in the way of burr, not much in the way of really anything aside from machining. I am not a machinist, obviously, but I've spent enough time now at this point in my YouTube life and my collector life kind of staring closely at machining to be able to appreciate this really feels to me like very clean work. I mean, machinists of YouTube, let me know in the comments if you're seeing anything, but by God, I don't. Um, I am pretty impressed by this. So the texturing on this is really quite good. However, this is a thing that I noticed earlier. If we look at this guy, on the back, by the way, uh, the texturing is there too, but if we look underneath the pocket clip, what we see is a pad of no texturing at all. The, the, rather than letting the clip rest on the texturing, which is a way to eat your pocket alive, the clip has a specialized pad of non-textured area that they've cut out of that. That is really good. That is a, a very, very easy detail to miss that was absolutely not missed. And I'm a big fan of that. We see all of the hardware here is anodized to match the, um, the, the accents here. By the way, fully high-polished backspacer out of titanium with an anodization on it. Well, maybe not high polished, but it is a polished backspacer. I'm not quite sure what high polished means in this context. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, I, I, I digress. Um, you have a, uh, you, you've got some really nice polish on the backspacer here. You have a clip on this guy. It's a relatively long clip, which actually bothers some people. I like long clips on pocket knives, actually. That doesn't bug me particularly. Gives you a little bit more security, and especially on a relatively short knife. I'm, I'm completely okay with that. But one thing that you're going to notice is that if we look at this in the right angle, the clip matches the rest of the knife. And the clip, by the way, is on there very securely. I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth, and I'm not wiggling it back and forth at all. Um, they, there are two screws here, but I feel like there might even be an indent or something like that, keeping this clip in there as securely as it is. But we see here that the, the pattern of the scales follows through the clip and goes through to the other side. That's nice. That's really nice. That is a prestige move. That's like a details-oriented sort of thing that I am I am not unimpressed with, right? Um, they have done a really nice job of making that work, and of course, parallax means that that's not always going to be the case, right? This is the same reason that if you're wearing a watch with a second hand and second indices, um, depending on the angle you're looking at it, especially for quartz where it's going tick, 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 you might not always see it look like it's aligned, but this is aligned enough that it's like, yeah, that was not an accident. In. And the pattern here of the curvature matches, that's nice. That's really nice. The clip itself is good. It's got nice spring tension to it. Um, it's got a very nice bottom to it. It's just rounded. The sides of the clip are just as polished as the rest of the knife. Dude, seriously? I mean, and I don't just mean the side up here. I don't mean this tall surface. I mean the entire side of the clip. I'll clean it off for you here. 
Yeah, same polish. That's nice. But one thing that's worth noting, by the way, in the polishing world is it's very easy to over-polish. By over-polishing, I mean you end up rounding off corners. You don't get sharp lines anymore. You get round humps on things. They have not done that here. This polishing is right where it needs to be. This is going to maybe feel like uh, fanboying to somebody, but I want to make very clear, I just got this knife. I haven't finished my review of it yet. I haven't even, been, I haven't even started my review of it. It's been in my pocket for like 20 minutes, right? Um, uh, but this is just a really, really impressive technical piece here. Um, we can look at the lock bar cutout. Um, the, uh, this little area here it serves basically to, uh, to thin the lock bar out a little bit. Shows people what's going on there. Um, and what they've done is not only have they continued that cut through, but they've done it in a way that actually looks reasonably attractive. And look at this. They've even done... You see this little area right here? This one thing that's kind of tucked up a little bit more? If I'm looking at this correctly, and maybe I'm not, maybe I'm the, maybe the skiff people are looking at this like, you idiot, what are you talking about? But if they were to, uh, hold on just a second, let me get myself a pointing tool. This little ridge right here, this guy, if they were to bring that all the way down so that it was flush with the other guys, you would end up with a sharp corner right at the bottom here. You would end up with a sharper cutout. And I worry, and I suspect that they had worried that this might be a stress riser, that there might be, with that sharp corner there, you're going to end up with a little bit more possibility of breakage. And so they've kind of hiked this guy up. This is a thing that in practice, like as you're first looking at it, like, huh, that's a little weird. That doesn't seem to match. One of these things is not like the other. But then I looked at it and like, oh, Actually, that makes sense from a longevity perspective. So it's one of those things that may not immediately be perfect, but it, uh, it sure looks pretty good afterwards. The little hole in there, honestly, the little hole in there is, uh, it, that doesn't really fit the rest of the aesthetic, but I kind of get why you need to do it that way, right? You need to drill a hole to start a cut there. So I'm not going to uh, drag them too hard for it, but... That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. We've got ourselves a nice little uh, uh, lock bar insert here. Let's see right on the side there. We've got ourselves a very nice little here. I'll open it up so you can see. See this little pocketing area here makes it very easy to get in there and unplug the, uh, unplug the knife. Wow, unlock the blade is what I meant to say. You can unplug the knife as well. I mean, uh, here, watch. Plugged in. Oh, 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 damn it, I'm off camera. Ah, ah, this gag was not worth this zoom out. Here we go, plugged in. Unplug. There you go. Problem solved. Anyways, back at the ranch. Um, uh, but uh, you know, pop this guy open. It's very easy to unlock the knife. That's the term I was looking for here. But yeah, one other thing that's worth noting, by the way, is the, the the geometry of this whole affair. Um, it's very easy to have pivot hardware sticking way out, but I think they've done a really nice job of putting it kind of where it needs to be and not giving it a whole heck of a lot of trouble there. If we look a little closer here, we have a uh, a little engraving here, Drifter number sixty six. Apparently, I get my kicks on Drift is 66 here, um, which isn't going to make sense to a lot of kids, but hey, whatever, because they don't know the reference. I barely know the reference, honestly. I don't even know. I'm sure the comments are going to be full of people saying, Nick, you idiot, but that's no different from any other video. We do see, by the way, that the inside of the backspace, it does not have the same level of high polish as the rest of the knife. I'm not going to drag them for it. By the way, a little skiff there. Ah, nice. It's the uh, Skiff Made Blades logo. Um, and, you know, whatever, not a big deal here. And it's a little bit, uh, the, the, the anodization looks a different color because I haven't recently, you know, put it on, uh, uh, wiped it off there. Uh, oil from your fingers will naturally sort of make anodization look a little bit less uh, poppy, if you will. Not like it'll sound a little less like pop music, although eh, I suppose that does too, right? Um, but looking at this knife here, um, is there anything else I want to poke at here? I mean, looking at the back part of this, again, nice rounding here, because the back part of this is very important for uh, for ergonomics, etc. Looking at the flipper tab, flipper tab is huge. That is perhaps my main complaint about this knife, is this pocket packer is gigantic. This thing looks like a very exotic species of bird packing on whatever's in your pocket, right? But at the same time, um, it's nicely chamfered. It's nicely smooth. The whole knife has lots of gription because of this fa uh, this fabric, because of this almost looks fabricy, right? Um, because of this handle material uh, or handle milling, that is. I am impressed. If I were to be handed this knife at a random show, and indeed, I, I'm trying to remember. I don't know that I have ever handled a skiff. Maybe I have. Um, but either way, if I were to be handed this knife at a show, this is one that would jump out at me. Um, and the reason is sort of the sum total, and then the smoothness of the action, by the way. The detent on this guy is, it's really hard to show this off, right? But the detent on this guy is just delicious. Um, it's one of those detents that's like, if this, 
if this isn't perfect, it's close enough that I don't care whether it's perfect or not, right? Um, it's really, really well done. And then the smoothness on the clothes, it's not like a super fall shutty knife, but it is glassy. The fact that they have done is much, you know, remember, looking at the finishing on this guy here, looking at this polish, that polish is the same polish that the detent ball is riding along as the knife is closing. Having that very nicely polished makes for a very glassy action, makes for a very glassy close, and that's, that's great. I am just really, really, impressed with this guy. This has the hallmarks of a knife that the maker really, really, really gave a damn about. The price is up there. I'm going to be real with you here. This is, um, uh, hey, I want to say 825 bucks. And um, the books are pretty, uh, <laughs> the books are full. Let's just put it that way in a good reason, right? Um, and the, the, the blade steel on this, I believe, is CPM 154, which is not the, oh my God, top of the line right? But at the same time, I look at this knife and it is apparent to me at every different stage and in a variety of different ways that the person making this knife really, really, really gave a damn. They, they have gone through and they have chased all of the various things and they have made a design that is beautifully done. But more importantly, they have made a design that is beautifully finished. This is a knife that is technically damn near perfect. My only gripe so far that's of any substance is that the pivot and these back screws are free spinning. Oh no, they're tooled on both sides. It's not really a big deal. This is really, really, really good. And it just impresses me. This is a piece of work that makes me think, like there are two levels. As a gear reviewer, there's the question of like, do I recommend it to other people? As a gear enthusiast, there's the question of like, do I recommend it to myself? Do I like this piece? Is it something that's going to stick around? And then there's kind of a third level. Once you get past a per certain point, by the way, pretense alert, pretense alert. But there's a gear curator level of it where it's like, is this thing a representative piece of knife making? Is this a thing that I think people should you know, be able to see, that people should pay attention to? And honestly, this kind of is. This is going to, be, you know, at least for a little while, right? I, don't, I can't tell the future, right? But this is going to be a piece I probably reference a fair amount when it comes to perfection of execution. And not even like, I get the impression that, you know, sure, there was a lot of CNC time put into these handles. But I get the impression there was a lot of hand time too. These kinds of polishes, as best as I know, don't come off of machines. Maybe there were fancy ways out there. I don't know. I'm not a machinist. But this kind of a finish, I don't believe comes off a machine. This kind of finish might come off a really good double disc. And, but at the same time, it looks like they've done some polishing. This kind of polishing, this kind of polishing, I can't see a way. There is a lot of time done, a lot of work done after this knife was finished to make this really great. And the end result is something I think that really will be exceptional. Eugene Kwan, another YouTube reviewer, has been saying for, for, for months now, oh my God, Skiff. I think Dr. Frunky had one. I want to say Metal Complex. Like a bunch of other YouTubers have had them. And I just hadn't got around to it because, well, I was on the, on the books, but I didn't, you know, yeah. I figured I'm on the books and I'm not running out of Anyways, finally got one. It's like, oh yeah, that's why. That's why this is a knife that could make a, a jaded gear collector excited. This is a knife that could make a YouTuber excited. This is a knife that really shows off what it means to give a damn. And uh, this is not a full review. There may be bad, there may be ugly. I haven't spent enough time with it to tell you that. But at the same time, this is the kind of thing that I might look for. This is the kind of thing that if I see, and given yeah, there are other ways to impress me, but it, this is the kind of thing that if you hand a knife to me at a show is going to really blow my mind. And these are the kinds of details that I think really separate a piece like this from a piece that might be a production piece. Like I'm thinking like a Rayot made thing where all the details, they're pretty nicely done. Like technically it's perfect, but then there's the extra mile and there is a bunch of of extra mile in this. And I love seeing that. And it's not that common. And it's nice to see every so often. So anyways, there you go. Holy crap, this was a 20 minute gush fest, but I'm impressed with it. Uh, we'll put it that way. Full review pending. Uh, keep, keep, keep an eye out there in the future, as long with disassembly, along with everything else. But I figured, why the heck not? So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.